I was honored to be flown out for the first time to the Midwest Gaming Classic and organized by Dan Lucen and crew and absolutely fantastic experience. I was blown away by how huge it was. They had multiple levels and rooms of arcade games. They had an awesome museum. They had nearly every home computer and video game console from the 70s and 80s and homage to Ralph Baer here. It was really nice to see that. Tons of Pong units, lots of classic gaming goodness, family fun, Odyssey 1 here. Nice to see that. And I just wanna share a little bit of my experience and talk about why I had such a great time at one of the largest gaming expos in the United States. It's definitely probably in the top three. And, you know, it was just amazing. Kind people, kind vendors, great experience. One of the best expos I've been to. And I just had so much fun going around, looking at things. There were several things I had not seen in person before. I did do some awesome pickups, and, and so there's gonna be some pickups in this video, as well as some outtakes at the end, which are kind of funny. So definitely wanna share kind of my experience in general. And you know, what was really cool about the museum is it also had computers in it. I know there's a lot of classic computer enthusiasts, and so you name it, it was probably there if it was a classic computer that was popular. And they even had some failed consoles there as well. So it was really just nice to see Everything was really clean on display. You could just walk up to it. There wasn't any lines and you could experience these gaming consoles and computers. Here's Riggs, he was beating ET showing us. It was pretty fun to see him beat that. And you know, there was just so many different characters and, and people that were just having lots of fun. The vendor hall was large, had lots of different content. And uh, here's premium edition games and they were sharing some of their new games and having a lot of fun. And it was really nice to see them, really nice staff. And I just have to say, it was just good connecting with lots of different people. The Mortal Kombat crew was there signing autographs as well as this. They had a whole room dedicated to homebrew development scene. And so here is an awesome homebrew in development. And this is just awesome to see as well as just coming up and talking to people, very friendly people. And it was a really hospitable area. And I really, really had a great time. Also, it was nice to talk to vendors. This is Packrat Video Games. They offer a wide variety of Vetrex homebrew and more. Check them out, they're online. I'll put a link below. It was nice to run into Kelsey again. Super friendly, she is so kind. And you know, ran into Norm. Took a picture with him, video game historian, as well as Pat. Pat was great, uh, you know, he was selling his books there, as well as Adam Korolik with the Sega Pluto prototype. We had a good time, did some lunch together. And of course, Metal Jesus Rocks, good friend. We hung out all weekend, as well as Riggs. Other person is JC Gaming, who had crazy prototypes I'm gonna share with you. Here's my good friend, Jay of Square Pegs. We hung out as well. This is, a Jason from Trade and Games, good old buddy of mine. And here's Songbird Productions. I've done some videos with them covering their Lynx and Jaguar games. Here's Brian Cohen of Rampage fame, as well as artists for other games. And here's Todd of Old School Gamer. And it was nice to see him run into him. Here's my good friend Stu of Stu's Game Reviews. Helps me some old computer footage. My good buddy Thor here, as well as we had breakfast at a smokehouse place. Took a long time to get our food, but the food was excellent. What's nice about conventions is I ran into friends and forum friends that I haven't seen in years. Here's my good buddy, Justin, with his sign Mortal Kombat 2 game. The, I was part of a large panel, the biggest panel they had in years. Also got to talk to Ben Heck, awesome guy, as well as Brett Weiss. We got to hang out a bit, it was awesome. Here's some of the cooler things that I saw on the vendor floor, this is a Zaxxon tabletop. This is one of the few that I actually um, really want to get and I haven't picked up yet, but it was there at a reasonable price, but I, shipping was an issue for me. All right, here's a Jaguar CD in box. This was at Packrat Video Games table. 
awesome to see that. And they even had a walking around, I saw a guy with a boxed TurboGrafx CD. This box is huge, very rare and hard to find. It was really nice to see that he allowed me to film it. Uh, oh my goodness, awesome to see. I also played this prototype arcade game. It, it was kind of like, like a new take on Defender. And it was really awesome to see this. And it was just out there for people to play. How awesome is that? In excellent condition too. It was really cool. I was walking around with my good buddy Justin. We were checking out all sorts of things. Just wanted to share some of the uh, crazy things that I saw. And you know, I was just having such a good time. It was just a great connection with people as well as an experience. There was many, many rare games on the sales floor. This vendor here had a box Flintstone Surprise at Dinosaur Peak as well as many others, including a prototype uh, Ultima Warriors of Destiny, I do believe, for the NES, and that was pretty awesome to see. This is the craziest thing I saw probably was uh, a PlayStation 3 dedicated to NBA Elite 11, which is, is extremely hard to find. This was one of five consoles supposedly sent out to NBA teams. So I apologize for the footage, it wasn't the best. It came in this crazy collector case and it was just, just crazy to see in person. I was just blown away, uh, extremely rare. And uh, the vendor was being really nice and let me look at it. Here, what you're looking at is kind of a homebrew pinball setup for Castlevania. And so it had Castlevania music. Uh, there was a lot of crowd noise in the background. That's why I'm not sh sharing the music with you, but wow, it was awesome. They even had an Undertale homebrew pinball machine as well. It was awesome to see all that. Here's me cradling the Sega Pluto prototype. Adam Korolik was being very kind. Here are my pickups. I got this awesome sign from Walnuts. They're on Etsy as well. Contact info there. I scored a box Gemini US version. That was my one of my bigger scores as well as this, the ultimate super stick. And this is from Bishu. This is for the TurboGrafx-16 US in really good shape. Can't wait to check it out. And I've been looking for one for a while. Also though, I scored a homebrew game, Space Raft, second edition. Also got one of their uh, CDs. This is from Dusty Medical Records. But wait, there's more. I also scored from a buddy of mine who didn't want his VIP homebrew Nintendo game, and this is the MGC arcade pack. Homebrew games all in one cart. Super awesome that they do that. Bite the Chili Productions games on an NES cart. Super sweet. I also got my Rampage 7800 sign by Brian Colon. Thank you so much, uh, Justin, for helping me with this. And I scored a Mega Man 2 LCD, Tiger LCD. I didn't have one and it was reasonable, 20 bucks. Um, definitely was a new shape, but I wanted to pick it up. Didn't have it for the collection. So what else did I get? I got some cheap Famicom games. They, uh, there was a vendor who had these for five bucks a piece. All but the Mario Brothers, it was a little bit more, but, but still, I got a bunch of Famicom games I didn't have, including Popeye, Load Runner, uh, a pretty good baseball game. And so, yeah, it was nice to pick up some cheap Famicom loose carts. I like to have just a, a, an assortment. I scored some really nice boxes for my ColecoVision games that had the original shrink wrap on them that had the ColecoVision sticker. So I picked them up for that reason. And so there was just a wide assortment of games and items, but I got some crazy stuff. So check this out. A really nice condition hero box. Now this box, is actually the same box for both the 5200 and the ColecoVision. And look at the shape that this is in, 50 bucks. Really good deal on that. And I'm really excited to, to upgrade my box that I had for my ColecoVision Hero, which was jacked up. Also got an original release of Worms. I got both of these from Packrat Video Games and you know, uh, amazing condition. Uh, the new Worms versions have limited edition on them. I didn't have a first run Worms, copy of Worms for the Atari Jaguar, so that was awesome to get. It was great to hang out with Gary of Rock Solid Production. He's got an awesome channel, check it out. Man, he made this me this Famicom disc system holder as well as my good friend Thor. 
gave me a pretty cool wood burned uh, Mario 3 little cart looking thing. And that was awesome that both, both of them were so friendly. This was another big score for me. This is the Blockbuster World Game Championship. This was for the Sega Genesis uh, Game Championship that they ran. And oh my goodness, check that out. Two, a, a button and a pin from that. And that was awesome to have that added to the collection as those are super rare. Now, my big score was these. Two Atari Jaguar prototypes. And I don't think that they're final. And so I am gonna dump these. And so uh, stay tuned on Atari Age. That's where I'm gonna be dumping them. And so I War and Kasumi Ninja. Kasumi Ninja is, uh, it looks like it, it was well early along the production of this as it was released later in that year. Now enjoy some extra footage. Okay, so the cool thing about doing this is a lot of people did miss the backtracks. Like you said, some of us were born too late, some of us born born too early, but everybody plays a crumb out of it. I mean, people really enjoy the old vector games. Yeah. It's a beautiful let's, system. Let's check this out. Look at this, man. Oh, and you got the you got the 3D glasses, yes, man. Got the 3D imager. Look at this with custom joysticks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> or no, we didn't uh, <laughs> I think we did the price the right way. That was pretty silly. Yeah. Family feud. Some people stay in the dark. Okay. No, this is crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. Crazy, look at this. All right, we're gonna make a run for it. Really? Um, I don't know. Like, it's not gonna get any drier. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Look at, oh my gosh. This is nuts. All right. Ready? You first. What are we doing? Okay, right, where okay. are we going? This way? Yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 I'm like soaked already. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, don't go out there. Oh, oh. That was a bad idea. Okay, bad idea. That was a bad idea. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Well, you know. I mean, are people just waiting? Is, does it go away? I'm, I'm no longer- Welcome to Wisconsin. No On behalf of the entire Midwest Gaming Classic crew, including uh, organizers, as well as Dan, I wanna say thank you. I had an absolute blast. And I had a lot of fun putting this video together. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I upload videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the Immortal Johnny Hancock, and you have a good day.